Do you want Senate reform? Well, so do the conservatives, as Tory Senate leader Marjorie LeBratton calls for more accountability in the wake of the Senate spending scandal. Despite pressure from the opposition, the senator says she will ask for a full audit today. Let's get more details on this front from Mark Dunn in Ottawa. So, Mark, what do you make of these calls? Let's just, you know, bring in the AG. We've got, you know, the two federal uh, uh, Senate, you know, the, the federal ethics watchdog, the Senate ethics watchdog, and the AG. But the AG to me is significant. Uh, Anita, I know I saw one of your earlier uh, guests trying to sort of sort of poo-poo it, but uh, yes, the AG did a bit of an audit last year, but not the scope that we're talking about. It was more about security and some housekeeping things, but not what uh, the government leader in the Senate, Marjorie Le LeBreton, is, is talking about. This would be a full-scale expenses, all 105 uh, senators. And we'll show our, our viewers some boards here exactly what uh, she's looking for in terms of transparency. And again, it's all part of a damage uh, control exercise, but... You know, LeBreton is saying that Canadians deserve to know at all times that their tax dollars are being spent wisely and in accordance with the law. Therefore, I will introduce a motion calling upon the Auditor General of Canada to conduct a, uh, conduct a comprehensive audit of Senate expenses. I call on the Leader of the Opposition in the Senate, uh, James Cowan, and the Leader of the Third Party in the House of Commons, Justin Trudeau, uh, to support this measure. Of course... You know, we've seen uh, some outside audits in the last few weeks that have led yeah. uh, to, to, to some of the problems with the Prime Minister's office, Senator Mike Duffy, Nigel Wright, the Prime Minister's Chief of Staff, uh, these, these sort, of, sort of things. So uh, the Senators haven't been 100% uh, accountable uh, going forward. But some of that issue, especially with Mike Duffy, uh, Nigel Wright, the Chief of Staff, who gave him $90,000, he later resigned. This is something that uh, the RSCMP are looking at. And I think we have a clip of where the RSCMP are as they determine whether to launch a, a full criminal investigation. Well, it's, uh, I cannot answer how long it's going to take in a sense. It depends on where the evidence leads us. It depends on the number of witnesses that we have, that we will have to, uh, to meet with. Um, however, that being said, our objective is always the same, is to uh, try and establish the facts as much as possible, uh, independent of the time that it may take. Uh, for us, uh, evidence gathering, we gather evidence to present before the courts. If we get to a point where we do believe we have sufficient evidence, charges would be laid. But the timing around all of that will depend on where the evidence le leads us. And just an aside, I need because I just I was trying to deal with uh, Auditor General Michael Ferguson's office, and the bureaucrats there sort of gave the the you know, standard limp response. They're not going to say anything until such time this this motion motion uh, passes, because I think we we want to get a sense if it does pass. Yeah. Uh, just like when this audit would begin, when when could Canadians. Uh, get a get a review you know would it be uh, later this year would it be next year because we're looking at you know over 105 senators but it'd be a line by line audit and not sort of the uh, the focused audit last year on, on on some other things that weren't really expense travel related and the, the, the core stuff that's really enraged Canadians uh, and you know it's put the the upper chamber in a, in, in, a, in a bad light and of course this whole affair has entangled the Prime Minister's office. So, of course, Marjorie LeBreton, Conservative, effectively a Cabinet Minister on the Prime Minister Harper's front bench. So this is more, more, more damage control efforts as they try to open the books and show that uh, they're not wasting our money. Yeah, yeah, a lot of folks would say, some critics would say anyway, that the Conservatives are a bit slow uh, to get ahead of this scandal. Uh, but it looks like she's making up for lost time there, perhaps, right? And here's a, here's a quick one for tomorrow, too. The, uh, the NDP, the official opposition, of course, want to abolish the Senate. Right. They're, they're going to use their, uh, they're putting in a motion, they're going to use their opposition date tomorrow, uh, basically to debate cutting off all funding uh, to the Senate <laughs> on starting on Canada Day. Of course, that will never see the light of day, but it will give the opposition most of the day tomorrow uh, to beat up on the Senate, uh, leave them with more, a few more bruises and black eyes. As if there aren't already uh, a lot of scraps taking place there. I don't know, Mark, you're the specialist here. I'm recently tuning into the shenanigans, and they are just that in Ottawa, but question period the house of commons it's been rock and roll lately well it should be good today of course the prime minister wasn't there yesterday <laughs> is that where all the he, action is he, he, he'll, he'll be back today and you know this is where they really square off i suspect uh, justin trudeau wasn't in the house yesterday either uh, will, will be there today so yeah i suspect the uh, the opposition will gang up on the prime minister again and why let this issue go the house is going to rise in the next uh, two two and a half weeks so i think they're going to carry through right to the right right to, to the end uh you know before the summer recess Absolutely, before they all take a break and cool off. All right, Mark, thanks for this. We'll see you later. That's Mark Dunn in Ottawa. Folks.